Hey folks, it's Candy Lantero. This is already take two. I was explaining before, and I'll explain now that um, I'm not used to doing this. So you guys are gonna hear a whole lot of paper rustling because I took a whole lot of notes about this case. This was just very intriguing to me. A missing persons case that <laughs> involved an actual psychic who ended up helping to solve the case. And shout out to my cousin Kiki. This is her telling me about this. And um, it turns out that you know, we've had some folks that we know go to uh, the psychic Valerie Morrison right here in Philly. And I had never heard of her and I had certainly never heard of the Shelly Turner case who, I mean, we're not going to be able to tell Valerie's story without telling hers. And um, she was a track star in the 90s who went missing. She had a full ride to Clemson University and she had been missing for four weeks. Okay. So her mother had reported her missing on... Um, Dr. King Day, um, and they just couldn't find any leads. And the detectives decided to have Valerie Morrison look into this case. She was a famous psychic, and they uh, they really needed all the help they could get. The community was on board. I mean, the West Philly community, the North Philly community. There's the things that I was reading in these articles. They really were trying. I mean, no stone was unturned trying to find this young lady. And the colder that the case got, the more I assumed the either desperate or um, confused the investigators got. And even though a lot of people don't know this, they will call in psychics every once in a while. And in this case, they called in Valerie Morrison. And again, very well-known psychic here locally in Philly and, and somewhat nationally. Um, Sis Scott was so good. I mean, she was Nancy Reagan's personal psychic. Uh, I don't know how much that might have determined policy. I don't know. <laughs> we got to ask her about that whole crack addiction thing. Like, hey, what, what did Nancy say about that? What did Nancy say about don't do drugs? But uh, that just lets you know how serious people had taken her and the fact that she had come up with a lot of accuracies in this case. But um, what's interesting is whenever you look into the Shelley Turner case, I only found one podcast, shout out to the Black Crime Podcast, and um, a little articles that pointed to her. So let's just take it from the top. Let's take it from the top, okay? Shelley Turner was born in 1976, Year of the Dragon, and Sis was one of the best when it came to track. Um, she got started very young, about seven or eight, when she was um, pulled into it through her church, and she was just naturally gifted with it. Uh, her mother was also heavily into track when she was in her high school days, but she didn't go as far as Shelly did. And again, Shelly had a full ride to Clemson University. She was just ruling her senior year along with her friends who were on track. Um, and she was just really all about it. She was all about that running. She apparently ran everywhere she could go. And it was just her life. It was her life. Her coaches loved her. The people she ran with loved her. She was the anchor on the team. So, you know, this is the chick who was the final home stretch. Um, they were dominate in the pin relay. She was a part of one of the most amazing teams. If you guys are from Philly, you've heard of Coach Hickey. Um, and she that just really let you know how far up she was on the food chain. So it was very interesting. It was strange when all of a sudden this amazing student, this wonderful girl who didn't get into a whole lot of Wahala went missing. And initially when she went missing, it was really her friends who pushed for the media to take note of this. Um, it shows you that the, the young kids, the high school kids from different high schools, even rival high schools all over West Philly. And again, North Philly, um, were putting up lavender ribbons and putting up missing signs just trying to figure out what was going on with her. This wasn't going to be one of those cases where a black person goes missing and you weren't going to hear about it. Oh no, the community was 100% behind her or behind trying to find her. And they definitely had a, a huge outpouring of love for her mother. And her mother also uh, was heavily into the media, trying to figure out where her daughter was, trying to, you know, make um, a long plea of, of where she is. And I'll actually put in a clip right now of her. Shelly is a beautiful girl. We want her back. I love her. I miss her. My home is lost without her. 
Through this time, her friends were just in absolute turmoil. And this case was very spiritual from the beginning. Um, her friend Andrea is on record as of saying that she felt at one point she lived across the street from Shelly and she felt that she felt um, that Shelly had kind of entered the room and, you know, sat next to her and then kind of left again. And that was just imprinted on her as knowing, you know, my friend is with me, but she's on the other side. And a lot of other people were just feeling more and more despair. And even her mother was saying some very interesting things about how she also thought that Shelly was close, but that she wasn't alive. So again, this was leading to cold things. There was a whole big blow up about a jacket, a jacket that Shelly was um, borrowed basically from a friend. And then a few days later, after she's missing, the stepfather pops up with it. So people are looking at the stepfather now. And this is kind of what kind of gave the investigators a little push to look to the stepfather, Clarence Jones King. So they're looking at him wondering, could this be something because if the last person who had this jacket on was Shelly, she's now missing and he's now seen with this jacket, it's got to be him. She's clearly made it home or they met up when she was supposed to be on her way home. They're thinking that he was the tie because again of this jacket. So even though he's claiming, no, look, I found this jacket at home just because she's missing doesn't mean I had anything to do with it. He took a polygraph. He gave his alibi, everything. So it was still pretty cold. They couldn't necessarily put it on him. They couldn't put it on Shelly's boyfriend, who was one of the last people to see her that night that she went missing. So that's when they decided to call in Val. So again, the incomparable Valerie Morrison had been called in by investigators. This was also not the first time she was ever called in for a case. Um, She was actually asked to do a profile on David Berkowitz, who was known as the son of Sam. So that lets you know right now that she clearly had a tie with law enforcement and that they trusted her. So they called her in to speak to the stepfather, which you you all know about black folks and psychics. That's, that was not going to be something that was going to fly easily, but everybody wanted their names cleared. Everybody just wanted to find her. And so she speaks to Clarence and she automatically just feels like this is pretty much a dead end. Um, she didn't feel like he took the jacket from her. She didn't feel like, you know, he did something untoward. And she told the police, I feel like I need to go to the home to figure out what's happening. So they asked the mother, Vivian King, is it all right if they go to the home? She agreed to allow the psychic to come in. So Valerie comes into the home starts feeling around the house you know when you're a psychic you kind of get a feel for the air you might be clairaudient you hear certain things you might be clairsentient you feel certain things she decides decides to go up to the room asks the mother can she lay on Shelly's bed Vivian King accepts Valerie lays on the bed and all hell breaks loose according to Valerie she started channeling Shelly. She felt like she saw lights and she saw snow on the ground. I had to grab my notes for this baby. Suddenly she grabs Vivian King's arm and says, mommy, tell them where you put me. Valerie King, excuse me, Vivian King screams allegedly like a wounded animal. And this is what Valerie kept saying. Mommy, tell them where you put me. Mommy, tell me where tell them where I'm at clearly channeling Shelly and pointing the blame at Vivian the mother she does not handle this well at all the police hear all of this hollering she comes down the steps and says psych has got to go you all got to go in the quotes I can't do this I can't do this when Valerie left the home because she was thrown out the investigators asked her you know well what did you feel and she told them I feel that the mother did it I feel that you will find her in a wooded area and that you'll find her without her jacket and you'll find her without her shoes. 
So when she told them this, oh, she also said, I'm sorry. I told y'all this is my first time doing this. <laughs> she told them that she, she would find them by holy water. Something she felt like was had a holy or religious connotation to it, as well as it being near water, having water in it, something like that. Needless to say, no more psychics were allowed on a premises, all right? And um, it was, again, in the black community, no one was really going to take that too seriously. Uh, they wouldn't have said it out loud anyway. At this time, the case really started getting cold. And Vi- uh, Vivian King was really heavily in the media, even more, more so now, trying to make sure that enough people still heard about the case that enough people still, you know, paid attention to it. Um, but there were some suspicions now there were much more suspicious against, I mean, uh, regarding the investigators. I can't specifically all say it was due to Valerie, but it does seem like that might've helped. Um, but the community was still very much so on board behind Vivian King. They hadn't really, that hadn't swayed public opinion towards her even though some coaches and um, some of her friends, meaning Shelly's friends, were very like, mm, something is up, but no proof. And who wants to, you know, accuse a grieving mother, uh, especially one who was so publicly looking for her child. So guys, we're going to do a part two because this is going to be kind of long and Let's just get through it. I think I did pretty okay. I think I did pretty okay. Let me know what you think is about to happen. I think you all know. I think you know. I'm not going to spoil it, even though Valerie pretty much spoiled it for us already, didn't she? All right. Ciao, ciao.